Welcome to Your Story Matters. My name is Linda Olson. I'm the founder of Wealth Through Stories and Your Story Matters Masterclass. Today I'm privileged to interview another expert, John Clark. Many people get stuck emotionally when faced with significant personal loss, but our speaker today not only recovered, he actually owns four businesses. John is a licensed psychotherapist, entrepreneur, and marketing whiz. He helps therapists all over the world clarify and amplify their message to potential clients. John, welcome to Your Story Matters Masterclass. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. This is very new to me. So I'm <laughs> the whole thing was a novel idea when I, when I heard about it. Oh, well, you know what? That's great. This is actually my first masterclass. So this is, this is all new to me too. But, um, you know, it's all part of a transition in learning Absolutely. and moving forward, isn't it? Absolutely. So, John, tell us a little bit about the loss that you faced at a young age and how you recovered from it. Yeah, you know, well, and I would say with a caveat, um, if, if recovered was in the past tense, um, I think it's more so a, an ongoing thing. You know, so that's the first thing I would say is that um, part of my recovering was realizing that there was no clear end to it. You know, part of part of it was realizing and I think um, being able to acknowledge that this process isn't clean, this process of healing and of kind of getting through something um, wasn't clear cut, even though I wanted it to be. And until I accepted that, um, or, or did a better job accepting that uh, I struggled a lot and I struggled a lot more in the beginning. Um, so, and I'm, and I'm still trying to get better at owning this part of my story at, at kind of putting it out there and feeling okay about putting it out there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an ongoing kind of process, but um, the, the story is that I, I lost my dad when I was 26 um, uh, is a, a traumatic and sudden loss. And, um, and I was at a point in my life where I was already struggling a lot. Um, I was trying to grow my first business, a private practice in San Francisco. Uh, I was living and working on very little money with very little idea of what I was doing. Um, so I had a great deal of stress kind of coming in from all angles when this happened. Um, and I, I, I don't think I was really an adult yet. I, I hadn't really figured out how to manage life um, on, on life's terms, how to do uh, kind of adult things. Um, and then you had this major, this major loss happening right at once where, um, you know, my dad was supposed to be my guide for, for all of those, those lessons that I hadn't learned yet or was right in the middle of learning. So um, that, was, that, was, that was the loss that kind of changed everything. Um, and yeah, we may, maybe help me figure out where to go from here. Well, there, there are a couple of very significant things that you shared, and that is, one is, this is a process. It's a big process. And those kind of losses, those major losses, nobody gets over them quickly. And even when we think we do, we find out later it catches up with us. Yeah. I don't know if That's you know right. my, my story, but my story yeah. with the loss of my little brother was a a 45 year journey to complete yeah. healing. Yeah. And uh you know that that kind of thing uh there were many times when I just thought well I I mean I was doing okay and I was managing life but discovered then something would come up that would just about put me back to my knees. Right. And uh and it's like wow did did I go at all? <laughs> Yeah, did, because yeah. Emotional growth, as you know, right. is one of the toughest things to measure. Well, it's not linear, and, and we want it to be linear because we're human. And again, we want there to be a point in the distance where I can reach that, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. Um, but I think the progress is more like this, right? There, there are points where you feel like I'm getting somewhere, and there are points where you feel like I feel worse than a year ago. Why is, why is that? And so I think it is more about learning to live alongside 
that loss. And it can be any kind of loss. You know, it, it doesn't have to be an immediate family member or a traumatic loss. It can be a loss of a job or a divorce or a significant other. You know, I think we have to look at the fact that loss is kind of everywhere in life. And it's also something that really unites us. Um, so I think, I, I've, I think I've probably compared it at times to kind of like running a marathon with a sprained ankle, right? That at some point you realize, um, I'm just, I'm not at a hundred percent right now. And, um, that's just kind of where I am, but also, um, I might still be able to, to do a lot with my life or do a lot with, with my loss and find a way to, um, uh, to use it in some way. Well, uh, absolutely. You know, there, there is always, um, one, it's always a learning curve and, in that process, the more we learn, the more we have to share with others and help them along in their journey. One of the things that you mentioned earlier is, I, I don't know, or I'm in the process of owning my story. Yeah. You know, there's, there's actually, um, we all face loss on many different levels at many different times in our life, but there's only a few people that I am finding really own their story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love Brene Brown's quote. She sure. says, loving ourselves and owning our story is the most courageous thing we can do. And it, believe me, it certainly was for me. So, yeah. I, and I realized it was only after my journey came to complete healing that I was able to own my story, but I didn't even realize that beforehand. Well, I, th I think it's kind of like if you, if you don't own your story at some point, it will kind of own you or it will at least, um, I think be directing and kind of pushing your life in certain directions that you don't really want to go down. And so at some point it does become about choice. It becomes about realization and about seeing that, um, these are the, this is the hand I was dealt. Um, and going down that road of asking why over and over again doesn't, hasn't necessarily gotten me unstuck. In fact, maybe it's gotten me more stuck. And so at some point, it, it might be about what do I do now? What do I do from here? And I think this is also where people get stuck in their lives. Um, if you're also in business, you know, I think you can get really stuck there as well and feeling like things aren't fair. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of traps along the way that I think we can fall into. And certainly I have fallen into and I'm still in, you know, at risk of, of falling into. But I think on the other side of it and, and what my, my loss and my grief has taught me is more along the lines of living with less fear. Um, there's something where you realize the fragility of life very personally, very, very, um, very intimately. Um, when you go through a loss and that loss can make you more tentative about life. Um, and it can also make you just a little, a little more brave and a little less fearful. And I think that is a good outcome or an outcome that we can kind of hope for in loss. And I think that was been, that's been my experience is that things that used to scare me just feel really small now. And I'm able to bring that into my business or the way that I I help clients or, um, or, or putting a new idea out there into the world. So, yeah. Very good. And that's, that's absolutely true. You know, when we face the fear, then we become a little more confident. And, you know, uh, positioning is all about what we do in one area, we do in all areas. So we, if we become more confident in one area, that translates to greater confidence, even in stepping out and taking greater risks. That's right. So, um, you know, obviously as a business owner of multiple businesses, as a psychotherapist, tell us a little bit about how, how your story of loss, how you use your story in your business. I think, um, I didn't realize at the time what it was doing uh, for me, but again, it just conceptualizing um, some of my fears around the bigger fear of loss or even of um, my own, uh, my own mortality was a big part of it and realizing that um, 
playing it safe wasn't really going to get me anywhere. Um, and so again, I think using my grief and my fear to, um, to make some of those other fears smaller, whether it's, am I going to have enough money? Are people going to like me? Right. Are they going to, you know, subscribe to my podcast or whatever it is? Um, you know, like this kind of popularity contest or status just became less important to me. And so I was freed up from those fears, even though I still have others, right? They were just so much bigger that I felt like I can finally go for it and I can do some things and I can be less afraid of other people too. Um, the people who were in power, people who were aggressive in the world or other, you know, entrepreneurs who were really aggressive or, or maybe maybe they're copying me or something like that. There's just, there's a lot of that stuff that kind of floats around. And when you see it as very fleeting and temporary and insignificant, um, the, you have the potential to move past it and to just do bigger things in life than to get caught up in all this little stuff. Yeah. Yes, very good. So all of our listeners have faced loss. Many of them are, are facing significant loss right now what what golden nugget could you give them to just help them move forward with wherever they are right now yeah i you know i would say that that to listen to the people who have been there because even though part of your mind when, when people are giving you advice you're still going to go well but you're not me or you didn't lose your, your wife or your husband or whatever it is like there's always that comparing that goes on truly listen to people who have been there before because you, you can only see, you know, two feet in front of you right now in your grief and in your loss. There are people who can see miles ahead of you and, and, and can help you. So listen to what they say. Um, I think the other part is just seeing that the, the, the intensity of your pain right now is temporary. And at some point you will do something with it. You don't know what it'll be, but you'll take that pain and just like you are doing, um, you know, right now by making something out of your loss, by owning that part of your story, that will happen for you if you, if you believe it and trust it and work toward, toward that. Mm. Um, I think the last thing is you could do that person you lost a greater disservice if you just sit and do nothing with your life, right? If you just kind of say, well, this loss has happened and my life will never be okay again. So I'm just going to sit, I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to withdraw from life or from other people. And um, because in that case, it, you know, when we do that, it's like two lives have been lost, right? So what a disservice, you know, to that person who's been lost to not really go for it or go for it with a greater sense of urgency than ever before. And you're not always going to get it. Some days you, you'll feel that and you'll feel that inspiration. Other days you'll feel like you said at the beginning, you'll feel like you're, you're on day one again. Mm. And, and that's, you're, that's going to feel really unfair. But other days... Um, use it, find a way to use it. Great words of wisdom. Listen to others. You know, for me, one of the biggest things was I didn't have anyone to talk to. Yeah. Back then in a small community, there weren't, there weren't any group supports, uh, support groups or counseling or, or anything like that. And people didn't understand grief. The best thing you can do is talk about your pain. Yeah. So along with John's words of wisdom, I just encourage you to find someone to talk to and, and then listen. Their loss may be different than yours, but they still know the pain of loss. And like you said, um, John, you said, you know, then two lives are lost. You know, it's really much more than that because yeah. when I think about it, it's, it's not only you, but it's all the people that you could influence and impact down the road. That's right. And the easy thing is at this point is to just stay st stuck and just withdraw from everything because that's what your emotions tell you. Because it, as you know, it takes a lot of courage to get up, put a smile on your face and keep going even when you don't feel like it inside. That's right. So, uh, John, I know that you have a fabulous gift for uh, our listeners today. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, 
part of my work, and I just did this 10 minutes before you and I started this call, is I help business owners really of any kind, but I work with a lot of therapists in private practice because of what I do. Um, I was just working with this therapist where um, we were doing some digital marketing um, strategy with with one of my companies to send more people to his website. But that website was not converting, right? It would, people were getting there, but they weren't, they weren't clicking, they weren't calling. So what I help therapists do and, and business owners do is clarify their message, right? So in, in, in his case, rather than just saying, we do individual psychotherapy for you know, adolescents and, children's and, uh, and children and adults, um, it's finding a way to speak directly to them right, to actually transform your copy and have a central um, kind of thesis for your website, um, which could be a tagline or a slogan or something like that. But just to get really clear on what your message is, um, what your mission is, um, and work with someone or work with me to help clarify that. So I'm, I'm giving away a, a free copywriting session with me where we'll sit down and maybe even just have a personal blog or you don't have a blog at all, but you want to work on you know, clarifying maybe what your personal brand is or your personal kind of uh, messages. I would love to help you do that um, and doing it in the context of your story and how this, this fits into your bigger story. So um, yeah, that, that's what I'm offering today and excited for, for whoever will win that. Oh, thank you. That, that is, like I said, that is a huge gift. I hope that many of our listeners take advantage of that. So thank you, John, for joining us today and sharing those words of wisdom from a very humble heart. And I want to thank our listeners for taking the time out and uh, join us for this interview today. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks for having me.